My name is Neva Lillis. And I'm Aurora Godek. And today, Aurora and I will be speaking on the topic of femicide in El Salvador. Femicide is the intentional murder or abuse of a woman because of her gender. The perpetrators are men who currently or were romantic partners, family, or strangers. Attacks can include abuse, rape, or murder. Extreme cases can even drive women to suicide. Neva and I chose this topic because women equality is still a very pressing and unresolved issue. Femicide is present all over the world, as previously stated, yet is unknown predominantly. For example, when discussing topics, Neva and I had both seen images of a painted red hand over a woman's mouth on social media, but didn't know the true purpose for the protest it was present in. This in turn led to our interest in researching this specific topic. Femicide is an international problem, but El Salvador has the highest rate in the world. In 2018, 232 women were victims. This first number sounds small, but if we compare it to the population, we find a rate of roughly 13.49 out of 100,000 women. Compare this to Brazil with 1,206 cases in the same year, but with a rate of only 1.1%. Additionally, 67% of El Salvadorian women have experienced gender-based violence, yet only 3% know who their perpetrators were. Now, why is learning about femicide important? Learning about its past is important to understand how current social issues such as toxic masculinity and machismo are the building blocks for the issue. It is important currently as there is no government action or accountability. This lack of acknowledgement is only leading to the continuation of the issue. This brings us to the importance of it in the future, because with the lack of knowledge, accountability, and responsible government action, the end is nowhere near in sight, and women deserve the ability to walk down the street in safety now. There are three main causes to femicide, which all are connected to and support each other. Sexism, gangs, and corruption. The culture of sexism allows men to have more political and social power over women, who are stuck in the positions they are assigned and abuse is normalized. Cecilia Menivar, an expert on femicide, stated most men and many women in El Salvador believe that domestic violence is normal. It is what men do. The social and political responses are varied and inconsistent. The social response has mainly been protests. Major protests have been seen in South Africa and Mexico, which are other locations where the problem is concentrated. The political response has been minimal. While there is a law against suicide in response to gender-based violence and against femicide itself, the corrupted government has resulted in faulty and unreliable enforcement. The neighboring country of Peru should be viewed as a role model as they labeled femicide a priority epidemic while strictly enforcing new policies such as a task force and encouraging safe places for survivors to testify and tell their stories. In turn, femicide rates and numbers have decreased there. Gangs use this dangerous culture to use women as objects or property to be claimed. They're often the collateral for agreements. Sophie Hunter quoted a CNN report in her paper for the Yale Review of International Studies, which stated, Gangs are male-dominated, and girls and women are parts of the territories they control. Time Magazine's case study, Maria, was forced into a relationship with a gang member at 12 years old because her brother owed him a gun. She was taken as collateral, experienced abuse, and ended up giving birth to two of his kids three years later. As organized groups, gangs easily take advantage of women and girls who otherwise can't protect themselves in order to claim property and feed into the normalization of violence. The final cause can be described as corruption and an increase in femicide cases due to femicide cases due to the lasting effects of the Civil War. When the Salvadorian Civil War ended, 4,000 gang members who were imprisoned in the United States were deported to El Salvador, resulting in an influx of gender-based violence attacks as the perpetrator number rapidly increased, furthering the already intense issue. The increase in violence almost seemed to go un unnoticed as the war helped to normalize violence against civilians. The problem thrives because it's not allowed to be addressed and perpetrators are not held accountable. The vast minority, more specifically only 5% of cases, see a verdict, meaning survivors aren't able to realistically seek justice. This lack of hope keeps survivors from speaking out because it's unlikely their situation will change. While this topic takes place far away, there are things you can do here to end the culture that makes space for femicide to happen. Speak up against sexist jokes, especially ones about rape. That'll help make it known that even if those jokes aren't all right, then the actions mentioned are completely out of the question. Another thing to do is to believe survivors and support their decision to heal and if they want to prosecute. If you're not sure what you can do to help, ask the survivor and do your best to follow the answers. Thank you all for listening.